Hello and welcome to uh, episode 8 of the Notcast. It is the 27th of October 2020. Out of shot, I have a cat who's currently sniffing the curtains, who you can't see. So if I get up at any point and remove a cat, you now know why that has happened. And I will have been heckled by a kitten. Um, today we're going to talk about favourite pieces of merchandise. And uh, this was in, inspired by a question from... Uh, Marcus, who works at Mammoth Creative Works, and Marcus's job is to design wonderful looking t-shirts for bands that I really, really like and other bits of spiffing graphic design, um, and asked me to talk through my five favourite band t-shirts, which I can't actually do because I have so many band t-shirts. Um, and I have a variety of official shirts, I have a variety of bootleg shirts, um, and I can't break them down into five, so I think I'm going to do a couple of separate episodes around those. So instead I'm going to talk about band merchandise and my favourite examples of these. Uh, just to give you an idea, first and foremost, um, band merchandise I think started off with people selling badges, posters, stickers and t-shirts. It's quite a dire straits B-side. Uh, and then have then moved into the wild and the wacky and the weird. Um, and there's some really unusual stuff that's out there. So I'm going to talk through, I think, probably the the first and most obvious of them is uh, the live album. Now, here we have um, the DVD edition and the CD edition of uh, Everything Everything by Underworld. And Underworld, uh, this was recorded at a number of shows in 1998 and 1999. Um, I have the good pleasure of being at two of the shows that were recorded for this uh, particular uh, DVD um, at Manchester e Evening News Arena or the 9X I think as it was called then on the 29th of December 1998 um, the uh, London Alexandra Palace on the 1st of January 1999 uh, which uh, isn't on here and also at uh, the Wolverhampton Civic Hall on the 1st of March 1999 which was a very very rainy day and they finished at quarter past one in the morning um, this is your standard live a uh, bit of merchandise, the album of the tour, the tour that you can no longer remember seeing 20-something years later. Uh, it, I mean, obviously, I strongly recommend these because I went to see three shows on, on this particular tour. Um, but this is your standard live piece of merchandise. Now, this is yeah, not my favourite piece of merchandise ever. Um, perhaps then, as time moved on and the world evolved, uh, they evolved into the, uh, the gig that you were at available as as an individual cd either for purchase after the event or for purchase on the night so here we have uh depeche mode three live albums which means that i am on more depeche mode live albums than uh, fletch because uh, i don't think fletch has done anything audible ever um, so this was recorded at the London Wireless Festival in 2006, uh, standard festival headlining set. Uh, these two were recorded respectively. I think this is at the Royal Albert Hall on the 17th of February. And uh, this particular show, um, Alan Wilder uh, joined the band for the first time since 1994 and played piano on Somebody. And on this one was the London O2 Arena show on the 20th of February uh, 2010. Uh, it was on a Saturday. I was right at the back. The show had originally been rescheduled from, I think, around about the 24th of May uh, 2009 when Dave Garn, the singer, um, had cancer and they uh, postponed the show. Um, now, what that means is instead of seeing a show at the beginning of the tour and a, big, a show at the end of the tour, I saw two shows right at the end of the tour. Um, normally Depeche Mode play a slightly different variation of songs at the start. So, for example, I missed out on seeing Strange Love, Master and Servant, um, Perfect, a number of other songs. But I did have the, the advantage of not having a dead singer. So I'm, I'm all for rescheduling of that. Um, hang on a quick moment. I'm going to introduce you to this little dude here. His name is Price. He is 18 weeks old and he is now leaving the room feel terrible about doing that but luckily thanks to cats aerodynamic capabilities you can actually bowl cats out of the room so no no animals were harmed during the making of this video um also we have uh burnt onto cdr on the night uh the mission at brixton academy and burnt onto cdr afterwards uh metallica at the london o2 arena 
and Twickenham Stadium, which is absolutely huge. One of the last uh, outdoor shows I got to was Twickenham Stadium. Um, also, new order at the Troxy. Now, or perhaps on a slightly more limited basis, um, we also had Jesus Jones live at the, uh, I think, the Bull and Gate in London on a DVD. Um, I can see me all through this because I wore uh, the thinnest legal t-shirt that I had which was bright bright blue and I was somewhat near the front. Um, now the reason I wore that shirt was because it was very very warm that particular night. Um, you can also have the, the Wonder Stuff live at the Shepherd's Bush Empire or perhaps as another souvenir that pop release itself DVD and CDR uh, box set which features uh, that's a bootleg t-shirt by the way there into just pat out the disc uh, but that is all five shows on their 2005 reunion tour uh, plus a DVDR which no longer works uh, plus a photocopy plus a backstage pass um, so that was at the time I think the, the absolutely astronomical sum of £60 um, obviously things have changed a little bit since then now here's perhaps an, another kind of thing about the, the, the bit of live merch it's the live album from the show that you were at but not only is it the live album from the show that you were at if you ordered it in advance you could put your name into the credits and uh, I'm not expecting you to be able to read it but that is my name there on the inner sleeve of an erasure album of with thanks alongside several thousand other people um, another couple of things which perhaps there's the, the fan club live album this is a uh, U2's live songs of innocence and experience uh, recorded at a number of shows across 2015, 2017, 2018. I was at a couple of these. That's not a surprise. And uh, the U2 Live in Berlin DVD, uh, which was recorded at the last show of their Songs of Experience tour. Uh, sorry, the Experience and Innocence tour on the 13th of November 2018 in Berlin. Um, and uh, this is now only available if you're a member of, of the U2 website. Um, I was knackered by the end of this tour, but I really wasn't ready for it to end. And I think at some point I'll talk through individual bands and the albums and, and my kind of experience and maturity as we go along. Another unusual bit of merchandise comes from the show itself. Uh, this is a Metallica and Beer for All beer cup from Twickenham. Uh, a U2 experience cup from Berlin. Another one from Berlin, uh, well, you two Joshua Tree Tour Cup, three Earth Euros humans uh, from Dublin, and a Depeche Mode Global Spirit Tour Cup from uh, when I saw them uh, in Nice, I think, in 2017. There's also the bootleg CD, uh, which I won't mention because I haven't immediately got it to hand and I figure it's not that interesting watching me root around over here while I try and find the bootleg CD and DVD of Depeche Mode live at the Glasgow Barrowlands, uh, which I was at. Um, really great show. The Barrowlands is the best venue in the universe. Um, it was given some stiff competition by the London Astoria, which has now been demolished and turned into a railway station. Um, and also by the Leamington Spa Assembly Rooms, which, as I understand, has also now closed. So, quit yapping. Show me something unusual. How does a Pink Floyd big keyring take your fancy? Uh, five pounds for a Pink Floyd pig keyring. The cat, Price, who I've now ejected, thinks this is a toy and chases it around the room. I love him to bits, but he's daft as a brush. A small kitten shaped brush for the brush and uh, let's talk through some other unusual bits of merchandise um, just to give you an idea so yeah, when it comes to merch merch isn't necessarily just slapping a logo onto a t-shirt and selling it for money um, because even the best band t-shirt in the world uh, could necessarily be you know actually a brilliant piece of graphic design and a work of art that I would very happily wear. Now, in my opinion, the reason I wear band t-shirts is because instead of having North Face or the name of a manufacturer of clothes or Adidas or something, or some logo like um, I Eat Pussy, like a fat kid eats cake, for example, 
Um, rather than have that, I'd rather just have a lovely bit of graphic design that I can wear on my body. Um, and I will talk through band t-shirts at some other point. This, by the way, uh, was redesigned and recreated recently um, by Marcus, who suggested this original uh, episode. Um, so I'm going to talk through perhaps some of the, the unusual configurations that you can have for band merchandise. Um, I am wearing the t-shirt for Christmas on Mars, which is a film by The Flaming Lips. It's not a particularly good film. But it's a film, nonetheless, uh, and it's a black and white 90 minute film. Now, I bought this T-shirt in a bundle uh, with the CD and DVD of the film um, from America in 2008. I love this T-shirt and it's one of my favourites, but it's not a gig T-shirt. But what also came with it was its cinematic experience. Eat your own spaceship. So I haven't opened this in the 12, 13 years since I bought it. It contains um, a space bible in there. I don't even know what a space bible is. I've never opened it. It contains a fake ticket for the film. It contains popcorn, which was imported from America and now is almost undoubtedly poisonous. So I, I'm not even going to open it in case I, I, I die a premature death. I'm going to die a premature death. I'd like to die a premature death from something like, I don't know, fighting sharks to save the lives of my children. Or, or perhaps something else glamorous as opposed to opening an old rancid bag of popcorn from a band that I like. Um, but, you know, the idea was you buy the DVD, you wear the T-shirt, you put the DVD on, you open this, you eat the popcorn, you watch the film. Wonderful idea. Uh, no idea how it happened. Also going to talk you through perhaps a, a couple of things which, um, you know, also suede matchsticks. Again, given away free. As I mentioned uh, earlier, we've got suede lighters, we've got suede dog tags, suede matchsticks, suede condoms. Um, this is perhaps one of the finest bits of merch that there is. I purchased this directly from Mr. Frank Sidebottom himself in 1993. I think it cost me 25p. That is Frank Gordon, saviour of the universe. Uh, one of the finest badges that there is. I wish I'd bought about 10 of these because I know I would have lost them very easily. And it's fallen on the floor. Here's another uh, Frank Sidebottom badge. I love Frank Sidebottom. I don't think you can really be truly British if you don't love Frank Sidebottom. Um, here's a, a suede prefix badge for the Head music album. Um, head Boy. Just saw Head Fuck. The Head Music and Head Girl ones have gone to uh, respectively um, important women. Uh, or one important woman in my life. I'm going to talk through um, these badges very quickly. Uh, that's that's an absolute favourite. That's the ampersand uh, from New Order's uh, Round and Round uh, single from the album Technique. Uh, when the band went on tour in 1989, uh, they famously didn't have the merch delivered on time. and So a lot of it was delivered late and a lot of it could then be bought very, very cheaply. Uh, after the, this is, a, I think, an official New Order 1983 Factory Records badge following the Peter Savile colour code. I uh, should quickly point out that the uh, the album Power, Corruption and Lies here uh, contains a colour code on it, as indeed does the single Blue Monday and the single Confusion. Um, that colour code ties to uh, alphanumeric values, so each variation of colours is a letter. Uh, there is three and there is five and therefore that badge says new order it also says geek um, although that's not necessarily in the color coded language um, another thing that you get is the gig only CD and that's not the CD of the gig it's a gig only CD that's only sold at the concert or it's given away at the concert this is a particular example of a CD that is given away um, at a show this is a three inch CD single of REM's The Outsiders from what is widely regarded as their worst album ever, Around the Sun. Um, it's a three inch CD. I've never played it. It sits on a shelf. Uh, there was quite literally boxes and boxes of them outside the Hammersmith show in 2005. Um, there's also another variation on it, which is a CD that is given to you as you walk in. This is a CD EP by... Um, band called Hope of the States, uh, 
the translation of this is the 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 house of terrible children uh, le arc de l'enfant terribles or terrible i don't know i am terrible at that it's got a you know a hessian it's got a plastic sleeve it's got a hessian wrap around it it's got a handwritten note with the name of the band on it it's got five uh, very rare songs uh, which were later farmed out as b-sides on various singles and that was that was given away to i think the first 50 people at every show at a set of shows um of course you can just go to the merch stand and buy cds here are two examples of uh, show only cds this is the twilight sads no one can ever know uh cdr ep i think it's a numbered limited edition this one is number 96 of 300 it was sold in the us in 2012 it contains uh, i think six tracks five of which have not been released anywhere else one of which was on the b-side of a uh, a seven inch single this is the oran moore session this is number 115 of 300 um this is one of my favorite albums of all time and uh, i'm going to talk about how much i love the twilight sad at another point um this one i bought off discogs very recently um you get the, the seller wouldn't sell it to the uk so um that's a friend of mine in america mike thank you mike um if he would uh pimp that cd and uh, take receipt of it and then forward it on which he very successfully did so my collection has very few missing links in it now i think there's one twilight sad format i haven't got at all um here's another cd which is was only available at the show um this is uh, a compilation called film music and the songs which is a two cd set that was uh sold by the the there their last show in their original incarnation uh, or their original lifespan in 2002 um, so there are 500 copies of these this was only sold at the merch store at that show it contains um, all their singles here uh, but it contains 46 uh, instrumental songs from various film soundtracks some of which were used some of which weren't used um, I didn't buy it at the show because it had sold out much quicker but I did see a copy uh, a few years later for uh, 23 pounds. And believe me, I bought that thing very, very quickly indeed. In fact, my brother gave me a call and said, this is the, the CD that you, I don't think you've got. And I was like, okay. And this was about 11.45. And he went, told me about it. And I said, ask him to put it to one side. Had a long lunch hour, left work, went and bought the CD and came back. Um, I've never seen another copy of this, and I think, from memory, it is very expensive indeed on Discogs now, so uh, instead of having a retirement plan, I think I'm just going to have a collection of rare records. So let's put that back in its protective plastic sheath. Uh, another bit of nice merchandise is the book, or perhaps another book, or perhaps one might call it the tour program um so these are the, actually i'm going to talk you through one of my favorite bits of merchandise is this tour program which is new orders untitled uh which was uh, a huge format book far too big to, to take into the show uh to be honest of about 26 large format photographs um for the 1989 arena tour uh, that photograph there later reappeared on the cover of the peel sessions album um that photograph is of manchester at its finest not necessarily its sunniest uh members of the band alongside various quotes in here and uh perhaps one of my my favorite quotes in here is uh page 21 that says uh artistic new order i mean if people want to think if people want to be dumb let them be dumb you know what's right in your own mind that's all that matters now this was designed by uh, peter savile who has done all the new order record covers a large number of omd covers uh, some paul mccartney covers uh suede album covers you will have seen his work and uh, this was um designed to be sold on the 1989 arena tour um the arena tour was about 30 shows across america and lo and behold uh, a pile of these thousands of them were delivered three shows from the end the band didn't sell them 
unsurprisingly. You could pick these up for like 50p each afterwards. And I really wish I bought more because I could have framed some of these. There's some beautiful, beautiful prints in here. Um, but at the time I bought it, I was 16 years old. I was on six pounds a week pocket money. I couldn't afford the 50p. Um, and so there we go. No regrets going forward. Here's, an, uh, here's perhaps a more conventional tour program uh, for the Pet Shop Boys Nightlife tour in 1999 and 2000. I love this. I mean, the fact is, you know, it's got a die cut sleeve. It's got the traditional artwork. Um, and actually, one thing I really, really enjoy about tour programs is it has text. It has something to read on the way home later on to understand, you know, what is what's going on with the tour. And there's a, an interview with the tour designer, um, an interview with the, you know, the band members. Uh, I can live with some photographs of millionaires standing moodily around um with dogs that clearly aren't their own actual dogs stunt dogs actually um but what it does do is it, it pays some attention to the contents and and the worst tour program i've ever seen uh was uh one for the manic street preachers for their lifeblood tour in 2004 i wish i'd dug it out uh, it's just random abstract pictures no text no information just random abstract pictures of um, sprays of liquid, uh, which was just absurd. Uh, these here, like that tour program, a bit more like it's something worth reading in here. It's, this is a the book that comes with the Wedding Presents Valentina uh, album. You could buy the book separately for twelve pounds. Um, it's got uh, an introduction. It's got the lyrics to every song. It's got commentary from out, from from the band around every song that's on there. It's got a whole bunch of behind the scenes pro uh, photographs. It's got a download of the entire album with four bonus tracks, uh, and also you can download a half hour documentary about the recording of the album. Um, which for twelve ninety nine to get the album, four bonus tracks, a book, and a download of of the documentary uh, was pretty good. Um, debatable whether the the album is good i think it is other people uh don't and of course if you ever want a high definition glossy photograph of a mixing desk uh this is the book for you um and again lovely bit of merch there in uh 2016 that was followed up with this which is the book for the uh album going going uh, which contains handwritten copies of the lyrics plus photographs taken at the locations that the songs were written in um, and uh, perhaps slightly less re-readability but there you are now this is perhaps the thing that you would be more interested in is my book of set lists so this is not merch this is the stuff you get by asking the roadies or the same guys or the band if you can have a copy of it this is a manic street preacher set list from the first time that i saw them in 1992 at leicester university on the 30th of january which was the day that they played uh, top of the pops uh, this one is from birmingham birmingham university this one is from uh, leicester again 26th of january uh, this one here is another photocopy of that that is from the Wolverhampton Civic Hall there on the Holy Bible tour with a quote and every set list on the tour for the Holy Bible album had the quote on it. So this one says, nothing great can be done anymore by Napoleon. Um, last time I saw Richie uh, when he was a member of the band or indeed now that he isn't. So there's a couple of other bits that are in here, but again, this isn't much, just me showing off really. Um, let's go, go through here. So here's a... Uh, you know, some stage times and some, some 8x4s of, of the Wonder Stuff. Um, here's the, uh, some announcements. These are a couple of set lists. So this is a signed Miles Hunt set list from his acoustic tour in 1998. This is the set list from, I think, I think that's the Birmingham Aston Villa Leisure Centre, I think, on the first night. Um, I could be wrong. In fact, I am wrong. Um... This is the set list for uh, for Vent 414 uh, with um, songs Fixer, Fits and Starts. I loved Vent, incredible band, um, and one that will be making a return alongside a signed dressing room, uh, some show times, uh, 
set list for a band called We Know Where You Live, which was former members of um, The Wonder Stuff. Hang on a second. Uh, I, I saw them a lot, and I've got, I think, eight, eight set lists. This is the set list for Morrissey at the uh, Drury Lane Theatre in February 1995. Uh, that recording was later released on the deluxe edition of the Vauxhall and I album. Uh, missing the encore song. The encore song was Shoplifters of the World Unite. Uh, that was a 1998 calendar for Suede. This is the set list for the um, Suede show at the Clapham Grand on the 27th of January 1996. Uh, I met a very important person at that show. And again, yeah, some pictures of Suede, uh, press shots. Uh, this is a photograph of them performing at the Tower Records in Haifa in Israel. Um, a couple of other photographs. Uh, Manchester, October the 31st, 1994, set list there. Um, Alabama 3 set list, I think that was Brixton Mass. Um, and we're going to get into some Wonder Stuff set lists here, just to give you uh, some some other information. So this was the uh, the first show at the Down and Country Club, then called the Forum in 2000. Uh, this is the second show, uh, as you can see from the the beer stains and the foot stains. These are stage used. Uh, I can't remember which member of the band it was. Probably Malk. Um, this is set three. Uh, set four. Each one of the first four sets was themed around uh, each one of the band's then four albums. Um, by the time we got to set five, uh, the set list was somewhat random. This is a this set list here is the set list for the the band show at the King's College in London in June 2001, and this was was Hackney in 2001 as well. Uh, signed photograph of the, the four piece line of Persuade. Um, Monaco set list from uh, Wolverhampton in 1997. Uh, Top Leader self picture. Signed Ned's Atomic Dustbin photograph from 1995. Uh, set list for a, a band called Groundswell, which was. Um, couple of members of Ned's Atomic Dustbin and some other people including Bionic uh, which I don't think Andy liked I think he called it shite um, I quite liked Bionic actually um, but that album was now officially released uh, this is the, the set list for uh, Patrick Jones a Welsh poet who performed with the band in 1999 at the Camden Water Rats um, and here's the the at the uh, uh, the Glasgow, but it wasn't actually Glasgow. This was the one that they played at the Birmingham Institute as well. So, uh, just to give you a kind of an overview of what we have. Now, we also have in here some more set lists. So, let's see what these are. Uh, this is Guide to Pet Shop Boys Tour Passes. Uh, that is the, uh, the Birmingham NEC Pet Shop Boys set list. Ah, now this is a beauty. This is David Gilmore's set list from the, the, the last time that he played at the Albert Hall uh, in uh, 2006, the last UK show on the On an Island tour. So the last time that David Gilmore, Rick Wright and Nick Mason uh, performed Comfortably Numb and Wish You Were Here Together. This is David's set list from that night. And this is the first part of the show. And this is the second part of the show. Um, which includes a number of, of really awesome, but especially Wish You Were Here and Comfortably Numb. So we, we, we saw that show, and uh, David had brought in a, a, a couple of guests. Um, he brought in uh, David Bowie uh, to play uh, or to sing on um, Arnold Lane and Comfortably Numb on the first night, and on the third night he brought Nick Mason, the drummer from Pink Floyd, uh, to play on Wish You Were Here and Comfortably Numb. And that, so, on, so that was the last time that... Uh, the three members of Pink Floyd performed comfortably numb together. Uh, and I was, not only was I there, I got David Gilmore's fucking set list. I mean, that's an incredible thing. Uh, well, it means something to me anyway. And uh, this is a Peter Hook 
uh, at the Leamington Spa Assembly Halls in 2013. This is the first part of his set where he performed Joy Division material. Uh, this one was an extra three sets where he performed uh, the, the Movement album, the Power Corruption and Lies, and some singles. Um, this is U2's set list for the 25th of October 2015. This is the U2 set list for the 3rd of November 2015. Uh, this is Pop Elite itself. I forget which show that is. I've seen them a lot. They're always excellent live. Always incredible live. Uh, in fact, no, that is Indie Days 4, um, when Richard and Adam came back to play a couple of songs. This is the U2 set list uh, from a show they played at Twickenham uh, the night before they opened the Joshua Tree Tour. And they performed a invite only show uh, to 48 people at uh, Twickenham Stadium. Um, you may have heard me talk about this before. That is uh, one of the set lists from the show. Uh, it's an incredible experience. I think I'll talk about that separately. Uh, this is John Grant's set list for uh, the London BBC Made a Vale show uh, on, I think, the 12th of October 2018. Here's another Pop Leads Itself one. Anyone would think I like that band. Uh, this is Brighton 2018. Uh, this is uh, the wedding present at the Dover uh, Booking Hall in March 2019. It was the first show of the Bizarro 30 tour, uh, which means that it was the first time in a long time, if ever, Nothing Comes Easy was performed. Um, I think it might have been the first time for Let's Make Some Plans. Uh, although they were B-sides, for example. Um, oh, it's an incredible gig. I love seeing them. They're so good live. Okay, this is the Sisters of Mercy at the London Camden Roundhouse in 2019, the first night. The second night, I was doing something else, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but that was a, a great show. Um, notoriously hit and miss, the Sisters. Uh, and this is um, the Twilight Sad uh, from the Aberdeen music hall uh, the night after um, the, uh, the Sisters of Mercy show so I went to the Sisters of Mercy in Camden went to bed got up got on a plane flew to Aberdeen saw another band uh, depending on who you talk to I'm an idiot or a hero I prefer to think I'm just a bloke sitting in front of a camera talking rubbish and the piece de resistance sorry uh, apologies, this is a piece of paper signed, this is one of Darth Vader's letterheads, signed by Darth Vader in about 1981 when I met Darth Vader at, the, I think it was the CNA toy section, and he signed this piece of paper for me. Eat that, suckers. That You can't beat that. That is Darth Vader. Not even a guy in a Darth Vader suit. Dave Prowse as Darth Vader in a Darth Vader suit. So there you have it. Um, I should probably take more care of that, but it's not from 1981, it's from 1983, it was on the Return of the Jedi tour, but it's still Darth Vader's letterhead, signed by fucking Darth Vader, and I think, I don't think there's anything else I can show you in terms of my merch that can beat that, you know, um, be careful not to choke on your aspirations, as he said, something like 30 years later in Rogue One, um, but there you go. That's a tour of uh, my memorabilia, it's a tour of some merch. Um, what I'm going to be doing, I think, next time round is I'm probably going to be talking about my favourite band t-shirts and the gigs and memories that are associated with those. Uh, and I'll probably break that up into the official t-shirts and to the unofficial t-shirts. Um, I've got plenty of those. Uh, and to just kind of like talk you through some of the the gig memories that I've got. I also seem to think that quite quite a, a popular thing is when I talk about a specific band and I talk in detail about a specific band. I've got some bands lined up, um, but if you've got any more that you might be interested in hearing about, um, I'd be really pleased if you wanted to put a comment underneath the YouTube page or if you wanted to, um, I don't know, tweet me. Uh, it, hell, send me a postcard if you really want, if you know my address. Um, or, or get in contact in some way if you really want to hear me talking uh, about, for example, uh, this particular band, um, Nitsareb or Nitsareb, depending on who you talk to. Um, you know, I'm more than happy to, to do that. Uh, I've got to be blunt. COVID's, you know, seven months in. 
I'm not going out in a hurry. I'm not going to see a band in a hurry. I'm going, I've got nothing but time and a big mouth. And if you're interested in hearing more, pass comments along. Um, as ever, um, subscribe if you're that my inclined. Don't if you're not. Comment if you want to. Again, don't if you don't. Um, and I will see you again at some point, hopefully not too far from now, for Notcast 9. Uh, but thank you for your time. And I will see you again soon. Thank you. Goodbye.